Hi, I'm Andrew Riddick. And I'm Kristen Flesco. And uh, this is something new that we're starting out that doesn't have a name. We're just going to... <laughs> well, we're Fridge Art together. Collaborative. Yeah. We'll f- we're Fridge Art. And um, <laughs> so we're changing up our format a bit, and we have some questions that people have asked us about how to be professional illustrators, different stuff you have to know. And I have a list of well, probably like 35 questions. Some of them are admittedly pretty much the same. But, uh, so we're going to be more informative. Um, but if you haven't seen our other stuff, we, uh, most of our fridge art stuff is just ridiculing our really old artwork. But, so, uh, some of the questions that we have today are more, don't smile at me, <laughs> are more geared towards, uh, actual stuff, I guess. It's not just making fun of things. Yeah, it's, they're, they're asking genuine questions. Yeah, not, uh... le- legit questions. So, uh, one of them was, uh... Yeah, we're going to start out, basically this, this podcast is going to be about getting into it. <laughs> Not in a sexual way, but getting into illustration, getting into a professional setting, uh, and everything that entire. Not in a sexual way. <laughs> Not in a sexual way. And we're going to talk loud enough that we can't hear the cat thing in the back. Um, so, the first ones is the companies we work for and how we work for them. Now, a couple of ground rules that we have here are, we're not going to name companies when we're talking about something negative. Anything you're going like to have to guess by, basically, by reading our minds. Uh, yeah. You're not going to get it from us. It, it pretty much, we're not going to, I mean, if we say, oh, we work for these companies, you know, we're not going to probably use those companies. For one, we're not going to yeah. use those. If we like the company and we name them, we probably... Yeah, uh, we enjoy know, working If we named the them. company, we probably enjoyed them to some, some degree. I mean, yeah. uh, if we don't name them... It's probably going to be something negative, and we're going to talk smack about them anonymously <laughs> on the internet. But yeah, we're, we're not trying to drag trash into this. We're literally just trying to sort of express the stuff we've had to go through, which is numerous. We're, we're yeah. both in our late 20s, and I mean, already numerous, the amount of stuff we've had to deal with. And... It's like we're, we're not even a... <laughs> God, God, he is... He is a, I, I don't think we've been freelancing and doing things for more than like four or five years, like super pro. Oh yeah, no. Pro wise, it, it's been about four or five years. Yeah, I think so. So, and that's a pretty like if you think of the span of most people's careers, that's really short. And we already have plenty of stories to tell you. Mm, mm-hmm. And uh, apparently, well, I hope you guys learn from uh, any mistakes we list, so you won't make the same ones. Because my God, I really wish some of the things I did, I could just you know. Can you the... talk about all the companies you work for? There's uh, not so... any that you're not supposed to. Oh there? no, no, no. Uh, some of the companies. Well, no. The the one company I've had the worst experience with. I'm never working for them again, and I won't mention their name. Yeah. You know, There's you work couple... for them too. I, I do. <laughs> uh... <laughs> there's a there's a couple of companies that I can't talk about. Yeah. Um, not for a while. No, I'm I'm assuming so that these I'm are only be to talk my, my my publicly visible clients that I've worked with. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What were your? So what are the companies we work for? We. We can, yeah. We we both work for Star City Games. Yeah, we're that's both, our that's our main. main that's our main gig. squeeze. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's our, our full time job. Yeah, is Star City Games where we're both illustrators on the company. Kristen provides artwork for. The, the, well, our job titles seem to change every every five minutes. No, no, so. the job titles. Don't no, change. not the job Just title. The of, projects. Yeah, the projects. Or the type of projects we're doing. So I do like you do the invitational like uh, the winners. Yeah, the regional playmats. The invitational winners. Yeah. The Invitational Winners. States. The IQ Playmats. Was that it? But that was the other one. It, yeah. It's basically it basically promotional stuff. Mostly promotional work. Yeah. And, uh, and then I do work as the Creature Collection, which is all the really cutesy things. And then, like, the Parody Collection, which is just parodying magic cards. And uh, it's mostly... I do with the States thing as well. But uh, <laughs> that's, um, that's the majority of my duties now. It's just... Creature collection parody stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, the other company, do you want to list off the ones you work for? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, unfortunately, I'm really bad with listing. Like, uh, I actually don't think I've worked for a huge amount of companies. I've done work for, uh, well, I won't write, mention the ones that I didn't enjoy working for. How about well, that? Well, you can mention the ones you've done work for, but then when you're mentioning the, the shit ones, just don't mention them by name. So, like, oh, I do work for this company, and then, you know, later it'll be like, oh, God, this person really screwed me over. Yeah, no, and I'm, okay. And nobody will know that you're talking about that I'll, I'll, I'll work with the, the ones I've worked with within the past year, I'll say. I think that's that's oh, fair. Whatever. You know. Well, I've done, because most of the stuff I've done is just freelance, like, with, with clients. Mm-hmm. So, and that's, like, really hard. It's, like, a lot of the professional work I've done has just been, like, private commissions. 
But uh, I've worked for uh, one of the people, one of the companies I work for often is Catalyst Games. Mm-hmm. I've, and I've worked for Privateer Press mm-hmm. and also Ferraticon, I guess. <laughs> that's, okay. a, that's a, that's I a wasn't going to mention that, but hey, that's uh, fine. I, they're, they're, uh, they're a great company to work for. I enjoy it, and I don't have to draw like It's basically a furry card game. I, it's I an erotic furry card game. Yeah, I, but I we don't draw for them too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like they're they're yeah. super nice. Yeah, like I would say hands down, they've probably been one of the best companies and, to work for because they don't push you for anything, and yeah. they're incredibly laid out. Like everything that they want is just like, oh, these are all the details you might need if you choose to put them in there, and that's amazing. That's fantastic. They're, yeah, they're literally like the best type of company to work for. Oh yeah, I mean, they're they're absolutely. Uh, I, I I enjoyed working for them, and you know I've. Work for him several times, and hopefully will several times in the future. Yeah. So, you know, so that's basically it for me in the past okay. year. I haven't really, uh, I I guess I'm so busy doing other things, I don't, like, having one main job mm-hmm. is honestly a lot of work for me, and I've also yeah. been trying to, like, uh, do... You're putting t- uh, stuff together for your Patreon. Yeah, I'm right. putting stuff together for my Patreon, and I'm also uh, trying to prevent myself re- from becoming a... Uh, ambitious uh meltdown basically i i don't i like and i enjoy things enjoy doing things like relaxing and going horseback riding when that one time we did it and we'll uh, do it again yeah it was a lot of fun Uh, the companies the companies i tend to work for are paizo and mostly their pathfinder stuff um i do work for fantasy flight games uh in their is it talisman i don't know you know what's funny i have like they send me games and stuff like the ones i provide artwork for Mm -hmm. And I, I, I want to say it's Talisman. I think it's Talisman. Um, I yeah. don't play it, and it just sits in a box. I open the box just to look you, at it. At least it. you got stuff. I yeah, no, they're awesome. Yeah. Um, what else? I did work for Catalyst. Um, I do work for uh, Asimov Science Fiction Magazine. Contacts me occasionally. You still do? Yeah, every now and then they, oh, okay. they ask me to draw dinosaurs for them, which I'm perfectly fine with. The last time I had to draw a Kento, oh. Kentrosaurus. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. It was, it was two, two Kentrosauruses in love, and it had this this weird parallel with the people being in love. It was stupid. Was really I remember one story. of them was about, like, sneezing dinosaurs or something. Yeah, we yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I don't want to say I'm a bit of a bit of a writing snob, but probably not so much anymore. It was spell, Spellbound. Well, I also do oh, the work for Analog, which is their, like, another oh, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. from Asimov's. Um, but they're, like, other company. It's, like, they're much smaller company. Mm. Uh, dinosaurs are both... It's the same company. Um, and then Spellbound was a company that my friend helped to editor, and I did the cover for that once, provided some stuff oh. for them. Oh, yeah, I think I remember you doing the, the cover for that. Was that the Sea Monster? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, okay. I... Um, and, yeah. <laughs> don't mention it. And <laughs> um, what else is there? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. like... Like, I think most of the work we've done has been private commissions, Veronica. probably. For yeah, for well, the most well, part. you mentioned that you did it. Yeah. So. For the most part, it's been private yeah. commissions. Like, the most of the early stuff that I did, uh, that I, I subsisted on, was just private commissions. And we're we're both members of uh, Fur Affinity. Yep. <laughs> because. Don't judge us. Okay, yeah. well, okay. <laughs> it, it's, it's very easy to judge us. But the thing is, is that that type of community, it tends to have a lot of people that are fairly well employed like it's not like DeviantArt it's not children that are mostly on there alright <laughs> it's true it's actually, DeviantArt is a fucking actually, wasteland yeah for affinity they're actual adults who really appreciate art and they like and they always need them. more artwork so yeah. there's this there's this community that it's it's like an, an art economy that is fantastic and, and self driven and that's an impossible thing to find yeah you're not gonna find that on DeviantArt you can draw only so many Sonic Sonic OCs before <laughs> you can't yeah, God, homestucks before you just, you can't feed yourself on, on, yeah. uh, b- Lama Botas. Although maybe we're wrong because Sakimi Chan's, uh, Patreon is yeah, literally, we, uh, $28,000 every two weeks. I think it's. So what was so. the first major illustration job you got then? I think, actually, my first big one was one of the ones that was the worst experience of my life. So, uh, I won't talk about that one in this one <laughs> because it was, it was, uh. That was your first major one? Yeah, I think so. Oh, no, you know what? Actually, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, my first Star major... Games. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, actually... I mean, Okay, so basically... Okay, that was one of the first ones anyway, but... Okay, so my first one... So how did you find your Star City Games job, then? The first one I did was I was working As a waitress for, in a no, cocktail bar. No, I was working at uh, Anthrocon, and I met 
an employee of Star City Games, Holly. That's where I met Holly for the first time. And she oh, actually... Sure. Yeah, so she asked me, like, she mentioned, oh, I work for a company that might, uh, that, that likes artwork. And I was like, oh, okay, we'll throw my hat and hate name in the hat, you know. And apparently they wanted me to do some freelance, so I did uh, four token token artworks for them. I had no idea what a token was. Was that the angel, wolf? And- yeah, the angel, wolf, huh. zombie, and things. So that was in college, so it was, like, 2011 or so. Mm-hmm. so yeah, so I, I think that would have been, like, my first major thing. You know, and I was I was really excited. Your first thing and, being employed by a company? Yeah. Did you do something and, like your first freelance gig? Yeah, I think so. I think okay. that was my first uh, freelance wow. gig. And that one was fun because I actually met a contact at Fur Affinity. You know, at a, not a Fur Affinity, but at an anthro, Anthrocon. Yeah. So when people are like, oh, that's not very useful. Actually, it got me my job. So. Honestly, a lot, of the, a lot of the good contacts I've had in the industry tend to be through... <laughs> They, yeah. they tend to be secretive furry artists. That's, like, which... really surprising, but, like, a lot of fantasy art has, like, there's a Venn diagram of furry art and fantasy art, and there's a huge section in the middle where they both meet. Hmm. Like, I mean, right? I mean... Yeah, no, yeah. I, I would agree to that. Um, yeah. I, I would say, unofficially, the, the first art gig I got was providing t-shirt artwork for this this company called Keith Bublin, and <laughs> uh, it was my scuba diver instructor's... A company, and I had just started learning how to draw. I, I think I was still doing biology, but I, I drew like the sea dragon on the back of one of my workbooks because I was frequently really bored in class. Uh, he saw he saw the back of my workbook, and it, it had this the sea dragon that looks like dog shit. I look at it now, it looks absolutely terrible. But he's like, "Would you like to draw some t-shirts for me?" And there are these really they're really anime and they're really dumb looking. Anime is the best kind. I actually wait a second. I can show you these t-shirts because I actually. I oh no! Them. You still have them? Yeah, of course I do. Jesus. Of course I do. Jesus, Kristen. That, yeah. that is exactly what I said. Oh, you got it. Yep. Oh, maybe they're hanging up. Oh no, they're no, not. they're not. They're they're wadded. Oh boy. Well, they're white t-shirts, so already we're we're looking at high quality. <laughs> All right, here. Kristen has never seen these before. You I ready? have not. <laughs> oh no! So the company's name was Keep Bubbling, and I had to like. Oh god! God, do you like how you can get that yellowing oh, in there? Oh no! You Isn't know that it looks good? like like a really bad Far Side cartoon. Oh, like god. it just looks awful. No. I know they're supposed to keep bubbling, but that's ridiculous. And it's just, do you like? I, I put it's the like, meniscus on there. Yeah, like I colored it. Why? Uh, <laughs> why? Okay, so the text is all caps, but there's no like period at the end. It's just like. Bold. And unfortunately, we're not going to have a video thing on this. I know, so. I know. Well, you can just put up a JPEG of... of no, re- I can't. We're oh, trying damn to it. it. Basically, um, to describe it for you, it's just a couple sharks, and they look really goddamn dumb, and there's, like, print lines in it, and it just looks like a really old anime thing. This other one is much better, and it has a, a sexy figure on here. Oh, wow. It's an... Oh, my God. It's a fat anime man who's <laughs> hilariously overweight, but then there's a, ha- a beautiful mermaid where her nipples are covered up by strands of her hair. He was very specific that he wanted her naked. He was kind of weird, but um, he gave me $100 oh. for it. Well, that's... So, that, that was my technically my first professional paid gig. Uh, I made Yay. some, like, uh, free tattoos for some friends, and Kristen got to see that tattoo, and it looks like it's awful. It's just, it, it's, it's but not... it's really basic anime stuff. So that was the first time I got paid. Yeah, I think in a professional setting, even though it was my teacher paying. It's basically, like the uh, like the Tenchi Muyo kind of style. Yeah, like the it really, really bad. Is. It, it, all, it all is. We all started the same style. It's yeah, awful. We did. Um, but then I would say my my first real big gig one. Like I had done commissions and stuff for a while. Was probably the Asimov's cover. Yeah. And okay. the way that I got that was the person who's the editor for Asimov's is a high school friend of my mom's. Go yeah. fucking figure. I guess my mom had sort of forwarded some of my artwork to her, and she's like, yeah, I think we could do a cover or something, and they paid me a, a thousand bucks for it. And Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit, I've oh. never got... Well, what the hell? Yeah. Oh, so it's a cover of a major magazine thing. I've, it's a I've never magazine. read them. <laughs> and then I had to draw this, like, Robo-Man, and then, like, a, an overly intelligent Truden, which is a type of dinosaur, and uh, they called, were in a bathroom. Are they pronounced Trudon? I always thought it was Trodon. Truden. Truden? I don't know. Trodon. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Um, I know I know exactly what you mean, though. They're little theropods, right? They wanted them, like, human-sized. Whatever. What okay, the fuck that's fine. It was, a, it was an interesting story, and then, yeah, like I say, I still do dinosaur artwork for them occasionally, but I haven't done it for probably a couple of years now. No, no, I did one last year. Yeah, it was the uh, the stegosaurus in love thing. The kentrosaurus. Kentrosaurus. Yeah. Sorry. I did like a Don't like a dinosaur with a with a cold a different time a, a T Rex with a cold. Uh, yeah, 
You did. Mm-hmm. It's not like Andrea did a bad job. It was just a weird prompt. Yeah, they're weird. Oh, yeah. they're weird. So that was how I got that job. Is that awesome. she reviewed some of my artwork and then, yeah, I, I shat myself. Really. I was freaking the hell out. And I, I slaved over that thing. And it looks shitty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. I remember mm-hmm. that. Yep. It's not bad looking. I mean, it's not that bad. It's not like, uh, it's not as good as you can do now, but. No, no, like I said, I, I worked my ass off on that. Yeah. So I take it back. That's probably what that I that got oh published. Oh my god! April Does the back not look like the animorphs? Like it's basically it really like this does. really bad like nineties. So April two thousand thirteen. So I haven't been doing professional stuff. I've only been doing that since two thousand thirteen. Like companies, quote unquote. Okay, it's not bad. Three yeah. years. Three ish years. I, I mean, I feel like I'm uh, I'm adult enough to talk about this. So yeah. So <laughs> I think we both had fun stories. How did we find it? So, what would you say is the skill level needed? <laughs> oh, how did you... Oh, we both answered those. How did we find our jobs? Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's oh, not, damn it. That's not the question. Oh, I'm sorry. Asked. I was, I was like... Uh, what skill level do you believe is needed? That's one of the questions we got from our people. Hmm. In terms of skill level, I would say you have to be good. <laughs> yeah, in, it is sort of podcast. hard to... <laughs> um, yeah, it is sort of hard to uh, describe that, isn't it? Um, you have to be able... I think... You have to fulfill a deadline. Yeah. That's important. There's there's plenty of really good artists and stuff out there that they, they can't hit a deadline. That is true. Um, and um, I, I think that is, you, you're sort of, you're going to have to learn how to force yourself to finish something. A lot mm-hmm. of people are like, I just don't feel like doing this. Uh, you know, and they just lay out and they're like, oh, I just didn't want to do that. I'm sick of the man telling me what to do. So don't be that person. And then they... And then they just draw a bunch of abstract paintings for the rest of their days. Yeah, really. Go and just to... splatter shit on the <laughs> ground. We, I've had to deal with a number of colleagues and stuff like that, though. They're just like, I don't want to paint for anybody else. I'm tired. And we're like, oh, grow the fuck up. You want a job? I'm glad that no one was fucking like that doing. Mine. Everyone was basically wanting to work for the man because we were in graphic design. So Kristen's schooling is you went to school for graphic design. Yeah. Right. And then illustration was more of a, a side yeah, thing just, that became your main thing. Yeah, it was a hobby. I liked, I was in the furry community, and I was on DeviantArt, and I, I liked the drawings. Mm. But I never thought that I was good enough to draw professionally. So I went into graphic design because I enjoyed That was something I actually enjoyed. I took a college, a, just one course in a community college when I was, you know, getting my associates. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, man, this isn't too bad. <laughs> And that's, uh, so I chose that career in college. I managed to transfer in. There was only apparently two spots that year mm-hmm. for transfer students, and I got in. So, and all I had to show was art. So at least, they knew I could at least do digital stuff. I don't know. I, I think from uh, point A to point B, you know, when I graduated, I was much better at graphic design than when I started. And I honestly really enjoyed my schooling, and mm-hmm. I felt it was useful. Although, somehow, I ended up doing illustration anyway. Well, you know, life is funny. So um, I originally went to school to be a biologist and decided against it because it was hard. And uh, I needed essentially immaculate grades to get all the way through. And then I'd have to do additional schooling. And my my family is impoverished in a lot of ways. They they don't have a lot of money. So I probably probably couldn't have gone through the rest of my schooling if I was trying to become a vet. Yeah. Without taking out huge loans. Yes. Yeah. And Which, I didn't have any credit built and, and nothing like that. So freshman year of college, I switched over to art. So my degree is a bachelor in fine art and illustration. Yeah. Specifically. So I'm doing exactly what I want. Good. We have the same type of degree, a BFA. Yeah, I would believe the, the type of skill level need is you're, you're putting yourself against everybody else out there. The upside to everything, though, is that really good people are not going to shoot for beginner stuff. They're only going to shoot for the companies they want to work for. So, I mean, if you're like, oh, man, you know, it's a really good art. Jes- Jesper Els- Elsjing. Essing. Essing. I don't yeah. even know how to say his last name. It's He's European. It's, it's a He's mystery. a very good magic artist. Yeah, he is fantastic. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you know, he's out on the market. I can't do anything. Like, I, I wouldn't go into it with that sort of mindset because there's always projects that need stuff to them. So always the most successful type of person is the person that just goes after everything and is ambitious. Yeah. Because if, I mean, if you go through schooling, you're going to find people that they are, they're absolutely outstanding talent-wise, but they are, they're dog shit in business-wise. Yeah. And like, if you're a mediocre artist and you can provide art for, like, anything, there are so many more opportunities for you. 
yeah. than expecting people to come to you. Because you can always get better. Do, don't yeah. expect people to come to you because they won't. You actually have to put yourself out there. You do. You, you Unless, really do. Even if you're like a God's gift to art uh, and you don't put any of your stuff online and no one sees it, obviously no one's going to find you. Mm-hmm. So even doing something like posting regularly on Tumblr and having a blog where you upkeep it and you keep contact with people... That is a huge boon. That's a fantastic transition to our next question. How to look for opportunities. Oh, boy. Oh, no, wait, it was how to get your name out there. How to get your name out there. <laughs> well, uh, the easiest thing to do is just post. Yeah, uh, essentially. That's literally it. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are going to tell you, they're like, oh, I, I was scared of people go steal all my artwork, you know, and, and stupid shit like that. And essentially, you're going to have to put yourself out there, and the possibility you might be hurt by the internet is entirely there. I mean, but for the most part... And especially beginning people, nobody gives two and a half shits about your artwork. Yeah. And nobody's going to come by and like, oh, oh, hello, my name is Coca-Cola. Let me just steal all your artwork. <laughs> you know, like, there are no, no companies really If you're like worried that. about people stealing your artwork, Don't. then you're probably... You're probably not good enough to be happy <laughs> still. <laughs> That's actually, there you go, that's the threshold. When you, when, you just, when you just care about producing and you don't give a shit about, like, one person that might repost it somewhere else and you have too much things to do, yeah. that's when you're probably good enough to uh, yeah, start actually, looking for work. I would agree with that. I think yeah. that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, just, and look into your heart, too. We know if you're lying. Yeah. So. <laughs> if, if that's you're, the threshold. If you're okay with putting your, your artwork out there and then getting a negative word about it, that's yeah. also a great skill level yeah. to be at. If, and, you can take some, if you can take a critique. Yes, absolutely. Even if it's not, like, a positive critique saying, like, why... Why does the face look stupid? You know, or something. Like, yeah, you know. Like, you have to yeah. be able to handle people like that. And you, you have to have a thick skin. And if you don't, and you don't survive that... See, I... You know. You can be hurt by something. But like, why would they post something like that? Like, you don't have to be like, like I don't care about nothing. Fold your arms. You know, it, ignore all critiques. Yeah. I. It, but if someone, like, uh, I did have this happen once on, like, uh, and of course, I was a member of Elfwood. <laughs> I think it's still around. <laughs> I know. Don't like, judge me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the reason why I do no longer have an Elfwood account is because I got uh, internet threats saying to kill myself. Uh, that's a little, a little above and beyond. Boop. So, like, most people will, when they're giving critiques, won't say, like, just go fucking kill yourself or something. Like, they're gonna say, like, the hands look weird. You you, you have to learn how to parse through things. <laughs> yeah. And and honestly, just getting critiques where, like, everything is great, don't change a goddamn thing. That, that's also... They're lying. That is, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that person may just not understand yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, be suspicious of people who are overly, pra- you know, praising you because... I just don't listen to them. <laughs> yeah. No, that, they're, obviously, they're, they're not... The, the best thing you can do, someone can do is just point out something you need to improve on. Yeah, like that is and the most they, kind, best thing for someone to do. And if they wouldn't have, if they, if they didn't care about your artwork and you, they wouldn't have taken the time to tell you anything. Yeah, they would have just laughed at it and moved on yeah. instead of uh, taking the time to actually type out what the problem was. How do we get our name out there? Uh, posting regularly and we a we niche. built up an online yeah. audience. An there audience. There we, we go. We built up an online audience, and I've been posting on DeviantArt for like 10, 11 years now. But essentially, if you're posting on there and you talk with people. That is yeah. your, your best lay line. with the community. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's literally probably the best way to do that. Here's an interesting thing. So I posted this question, like, what do you want to know from professional illustrators on uh, Fur Affinity, Tumblr, and I think I just didn't even bother with DeviantArt. So <laughs> I, I think that's a really good way to show where I expect response to come from. Yeah. So um, Fur Affinity literally provided us with about of these, like, 40-ish questions we have, they probably provided us with, like, 30 of them. <laughs> like, yeah, like, a vast they're, majority. They're highly, a highly motivated art and, community. And intelligent. And even if you're not a furry, you surely enjoy, like, dragons who, or... Who hates drawn animals? Come on. Yeah, like, Nobody surely you like, animals. like, just some aspect of that. And also, there are people who draw humans in that. They're just a smaller niche. And, yeah. uh, if you want to be a fantasy illustrator and you can't draw animals, like... Really? Like, so you might as well just join for affinity. I mean, shit. It'll learn. <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk about that tough skin you type know. thing, be on for affinity. Yeah. But, but seriously, people on there are incredibly both accepting and it's just such a responsive community. It's, it's yeah. ridiculous. They like, probably gave, like, the best critiques and the oh, best, God, yeah. uh, you know, and they did it, like, in a way that wasn't just completely offensive. Like, DeviantArt, sometimes people would just be like, I don't like it because it's a square composition. And it's like, well, I, that I doesn't help. That really I actually have that. I, when I was oh. younger, I was like, like 2005. Anyways, so yeah. um, most of the questions were provided 
from Furfinity. I, I think three of these questions came from Tumblr, and mm. most of them were just retweeted of me asking what questions you have, which is frustrating. <laughs> um, good old Larky. So that, that's also a really good indication of, of where your audience is really going to be at. Yeah. And then DeviantArt, I just didn't bother because it's more children. <laughs> yeah. And we're not just saying that. Like, literally, I don't think either of us have had a professional gig at all. Yeah, basically post online. Post to all of your, your places where you're hosting artwork. Find new places to host artwork. Post, post there. consistently. Yes, and post interact consistently. With interact with people. Uh, mm-hmm. You could give, fa- give Facebook a try. I've, I've seen some people. Like, yeah. Lolish has really... She has, like, a hundred... She has a million likes yeah, on her Facebook I don't page. know what that means, but apparently Facebook is an actual community. We have thirty-two thousand so. likes, and we're Star City Games. Yeah, we're we're hot shit, yeah. and boy, shit, shit, everybody still. loves us. No, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, so no, um, so I, I've 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 heard that Facebook works for some people. Uh, I have a number of people I'm dodging on Facebook, so I don't post on there. I just can't be bothered with all, like, the fucking dog pictures and stuff. Like, basically what I want to do is I want to have a completely separate account for my art. So how did, how do we look for opportunities then? We go out knocking on every opportunity door. That's a fucking lie. Okay, so (laughs) the, one of the better ways to look for opportunities is to go to Gen Con. And I think that's helped both of us substantially because you you go there with um a portfolio like honestly like a tablet where you load some of your pictures onto is a fantastic way and they really appreciate not having to flip through through really old school things going there with a portfolio and asking for critiques from the art directors and we'll have a separate thing about how to talk to art directors and to spoil it for you they're just people just talk to them like people (laughs) Um, uh, people that sometimes suck your blood, so be very careful. Yeah, yeah, but watch yeah. out for that. Some art directors, not all art directors. Um, <laughs> if you see them wearing a fedora, stay away. <laughs> no good. Yeah, don't um, trust anyone like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that's honestly probably been the best way that I found work. Yeah, just go to a convention, like a big convention, and a lot I, of the times, uh, art directors like origins really. Art directors really want to get away from, like, really menial stuff. So if you go a little bit later in the day, like, oh, my God, somebody's art I can review. Yes, please, come, let's talk. And, like, I got a really, really good review from uh, Privateer Press. Mm-hmm. And the guy literally, I I did a dumb thing and I brought a billion things with me. You really only went, how many things would you say you want in your portfolio? Probably six to eight. Yeah, like, not a lot. Which is odd because... You know, when I went to uh, Eluxcon looking for portfolio reviews, the funny thing is, is that I had I had a, two two additional ones, like I had, like an additional one just full of like speed paintings and stuff for us. And apparently, some art directors do want to see more because I think I I, I would believe, say for the most part they don't. Yeah, for the most part they the don't. time is precious. So <laughs> how about you have your main portfolio, and then I guess if someone's like, I just gotta see more, just, you know, because I actually had one art director who was like, she didn't, I, I think she just likes to see a lot of things mm. at once to, to base to base her opinion who on the artist. That? Um, and it is terrible because my uh, my naming conventions, I am friends with her on Facebook, and I am the worst human being on the planet because I can't, can't remember, remember her name right now. It was the, it wasn't Cynthia Shepard, although Cynthia Shepard said that the 12 I had were fine. I had six to mm-hmm. eight in my first one, and then I had some, like, speed paintings, and she was like, oh, I'll see that, too. Yeah, six to eight's probably good. Yeah, I, I would say, you like, a, a small, 12. comprehensive amount of stuff that can show you a range yeah. of stuff you're able to do. So yeah. you just go up and say, hey, do you guys have an art director around I can speak to, you know? And most of the time they're like, oh, you know, he'll be here tomorrow or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, some companies have you sign up for them online on a different website. Uh, some companies, they're just sitting around, they're like, yeah, I'm my art director, let's come talk. Let's hang out, let's chat. And then yeah. you just go and chat with Sometimes them. Sometimes you're so, just hanging out. I would say that... Stacking books. That's been know? the majority of the ways that I've gotten um, commercial gigs, yeah. is that. Yeah. Um, I did have one thing recently that's probably not going to pan out, but uh, I was recommended by one of those art directors to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And... You know, so if you have if you have a good working relationship, which ironically I didn't really have a great working relationship with this guy, but it was really nice of him to forward my stuff along. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have a good working relationship and stuff with your art director, and they're like, oh yeah, I know this hardworking person. That's just the style you want. And the art directors will commune between each other. Yeah, they're so, like they're they're their own group. Yeah, they so. are. Well, they, yeah. they have to deal with a lot of shit, so I'm yeah. not surprised they're that's, their own. That's group. why artists talk talk shit with each other because mm. it's because. Everyone yeah, deals with shit. I'm sure engineers get together and talk about all the pipes oh that they had trouble building. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of pipe talk. We got to get this out in the air. All the, all the Mario's going into their pipes. 
you know. <laughs> so um, I would say that's probably the best way to look for opportunities. Yeah. Uh, you can email companies online. A lot of times they will not post any sort of thing yeah. about the art directors because that's the laziest way to do that. And they want you to put in some fucking effort, mostly. Yep. Um, you gotta you gotta actually do things. Like they're they're those are the people that will not hand it to you. You have to go yeah. looking for them. Like, yeah. Like, they're not going to say, oh, baby, it's okay. I know you have social anxiety. Oh, my God. You I've know? been sitting here just waiting for the perfect portfolio. Yeah. yeah no, they, yeah. they are inundated. And the, the nice thing and the sort of the bad thing is that, you know, there's a lot more artists and illustrators out there now mm-hmm. than there were before. So the market is more saturated, yeah. I would say, with artwork. But it tends to be all sort of median artwork, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, basically the best way to do it is go to a convention. I would say Gen Con is probably the best because... How many companies are there? All of them. Like, a lot of them. All companies. Yeah. Literally all companies Although, are there. Although, um, pretty much, probably 95% of the ones relevant to the fantasy field, I mm-hmm. would say. Oh, yeah. All right, Gen Con. And also, Alexcon was really good. I really enjoyed that. Alexcon is more a, a showcase art. for art. Yeah. yeah. Alexcon is where you go if you want... If sometimes art directors are there, and you can sign up for them. However, uh, if you want uh, critiques from other artists... Which yeah, are, who are kind of equally as better. valuable as, uh, in, in fact, a lot of art directors are artists anyway. You, you yeah, go to Luxcon. I really enjoyed that. It's like a week long thing. It wasn't that expensive. Mm. What? It was pretty expensive. Well, compared to like Gen Con's, uh, you know, the hotel stay and stuff, it was a lot cheaper. Well, yeah, I'm talking about like the hotel stay. It was like, a, you know, I think I ended up spending like a hundred. Fifty or or two hundred dollars in the hotel for like five or six days. Like I split it between uh, three other three other people, but that mm-hmm. was I thought it was great. And then the badge itself, it, although it was expensive, it was for a week. So it depends. You have to basically work it in. Like I found it affordable, and, and yeah, you know, and it was I quicker. Would, to, yeah, I would say if you're looking on this as, as a business sense, go to Gen Con. Yeah, if you can write it off as a business expense. Actually, you can in taxes. Um, go to Gen Con. <laughs> go to Gen Con. <laughs> Get critiques by art directors. Mm-hmm. If they like your artwork, they're going to give you their card. Mm-hmm. You can try and force yourself to give them your card, but they're not going to fucking deal. They're not going to care you about it. You can ask them if that would you like a card? Yeah, I would say most of the time, like, some of them are like, no, that, that's okay. No. Really? Yeah. I a couple of them were like that. Gotta have a lead behind they can't. For the most part, they, uh, I tried doing that with Watsies when I got it there. Yeah. Which, like, would you like my card? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for the most part, they'll give you their card, mm-hmm. and then they'll ask you to contact them at like two weeks later. It always tends to be a, a span of time later, because they have to go back, and then they have to chill the hell out, and yeah. then they're in the mood to answer emails and stuff. Yeah. Then. And I would say, well, here's my, here's my fucking black book of oh, really? business cards. Yeah. Nice. Company, company cards, and stuff. Most of them are not companies I'm ever going to work for, because the pay is terrible, but... Yeah, you'll have to look at that, too. Yeah. That's a Sometimes, story for another day, though. Yeah, yeah, that is a story for a different day. Yeah. Sometimes really famous things pay nothing. Yeah. Sometimes nothing. they use their power, the, the IP they have, to basically kind of abuse artists in yeah. terms of financially. Some of them do, not all of yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, basically, the pay not rate has actually been... Uh, I think the pay rate has uh, basically never risen since the 90s, and obviously with inflation and stuff, and with... Uh, it, it was... Yeah, it's substantially. Uh, basically, it pays substantially less now to be an artist than it did in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, when it was actually like really lucrative. So right now it's just like average. Really, it's not. It's like it's a job. Don't you can doom do. and gloom it. I mean, it's, yeah, there are still companies. You have that to hustle. Will, yes, you're gonna have to hustle yourself. Yeah, that's more that's or less. Basically, the more it's not if gonna you're be easy, if you're soft spoken you and you're you're intimidated by the thought of having to talk to somebody that you're un, unaware, or, you know, unsure manager. of, or like a manager. <laughs> oh. And you know, you just expect stuff to happen to you. It's not going to work no. for you. As well, an I mean, if they if they uh, if they're all timid and soft spoken, maybe you need to get like a like a agent or manager or something. Or like agent. really, I mean, it, you know, that's a, some that's artists a secondary do, thing. but you know, it, it some might people, be it's their wives. If you have a yeah, well, seriously though, <laughs> one it, person, it's his mom. Dude, I mean, whatever works. If it's yeah. easier to contact, if your mom is like a iron iron hearted, uh, you know, <laughs> steel bear. <laughs> then uh yeah you want her to, to to fight the power and uh get you gigs yeah you know i think that's actually a fantastic idea is like if you have a spouse who's actually like a you know iron-willed giant uh, that, of human that being. isn't but for the most part it's you're you going just, to have to be the yeah. wrestler 
Or you could just do it yourself. I would say that's probably the best way to look for opportunities, though. Yeah. Go to a big convention. Gen Con is a fantastic convention. There might be ones closer to you that host. I I don't know them because I'm not from that area. Gen Con is close to us here. And yeah. by close, I mean it's like it's a like seven or eight San Diego Comic Con probably has some probably San Diego related, Comic-Con. some related stuff. Probably Anything not video that, game, video games and fantasy artwork. If you're into comic books, go to a comic book convention. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you're like, I'm not looking to do fantasy illustrations. I just want to do comic book illustrations. Then yeah, going yeah. to then maybe Gen Con, to Gen is, Con not is not for you. Not worth it. But I'm just talking yeah. about that's that's where I got the majority of my stuff from, mm. except for that one thing through my mom, which is weird. <laughs> Sometimes you might know people, and uh, it is not a it's not a bad thing to use. What is it called? Connections. Connections. There we go. It's not a bad thing to use connections. But but know that you don't need to have connections. No. You make them. Yourself. Yeah. You, you, you basically, hustle. Yeah, yeah you, you hustle. <laughs> Trust me, if you don't have connections, uh, either you'll make them or you won't. So hopefully it was entertaining. Yeah, hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, you if know. you have any questions, uh, we have a number of questions here, but if there's a new question that pops up, you know, feel free to leave it in the comments. We look at all the comments and stuff. If you have a similar story, or if you have a story of how you got started and stuff, leave that in the comments as well. Yeah, I always love to read. It's always yeah, fun to see how, good. you know, the origin stories of our of our uh, heroes. Yeah, I want to thank you guys for listening. Yep. I've been Andrew Radick. I've been Kristen Flesko. All right, and take care.